This is an example problem using Kirchhoff's laws to solve for the currents in a circuit for a circuit with more than one battery. And also, I put this diagonal uh, element in there into the circuit. Okay, because uh, you may have some experience solving for currents in circuits that have only one battery or where all of the resistors are uh, in a circuit that looks like you know it's made up of just rectangles or just squares but some people get confused uh, when they see more than one battery in the circuit or when there's some kind of diagonal line in there because uh, those kinds of circuits are a little bit less common so uh, in this example I'll show you that it really doesn't matter how many batteries there are or what the shape of the circuit is, we still solve it the same way using Kirchhoff's rules. Okay, now, whenever you're going to solve any circuit problem with Kirchhoff's rules, the first thing you do, of course, is you sketch the circuit, which I've already done here. The second thing you do is you label the current in each of the branches of the circuit, and you just guess at their direction. And if you guess wrong, um, that's okay. The math will tell us that when we're done. Okay, so first, let's label the currents. We're going to have one current. And I'm going to guess it would be going down like that. Current flowing from the positive terminal with that 5 volt battery. Let's call that current high going. Okay, now there will be another current flowing in this branch. I'm going to guess that it's going to the right. We'll call that I3. And then we have another current going up this branch. At least I will guess that it's going that way. And we'll call that current I2. Those are the only currents in the circuit. Uh, you may think, well, hey, what about uh, this current up here at the top, but that current is the same as current I1 because um, that's all the same branch. That current goes through the 5 volt battery, but the current doesn't change when it goes through the battery. Only the voltage increases when you go from the negative term to the positive term of the battery. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we'll use the equation V equals IR to determine the voltage drops across each resistor. Okay, in other words, uh, the voltage drop across resistor 1 will be equal to the current through resistor 1 times the value of resistor 1, and so on for all of the resistors. And we're going to use Kirchhoff's rules. Okay, so the first Kirchhoff rule is that the sum of the currents entering or leaving any junction must be equal to zero. So let's pick a junction. And I'll pick this one here in the lower left-hand corner. So all of the currents that are entering that junction, we'll put in our equation with a positive sign. I1 is entering that junction. Current 2 and 3 are leaving that junction, so we will subtract them. And those are the only currents entering and leaving that junction, so they must all add up to zero. And that just means that, uh, you know, if you think of I1 as being the main branch of the river, and it splits into a fork, uh, of I1 and I2, then the amount of water in I2 and I3 together will be equal to the total amount that was in I1 to begin with. Now, that's the only equation we can get from the junction rule, because if we were to use this upper right-hand junction, uh, we would end up with the same equation, and that wouldn't help. So now, we go to the loop rule. The loop rule says that the sum of the voltages some of the voltage changes around any closed loop is equal to zero. So we need to pick the loop. Uh, first, I will pick the upper loop. Let's start 
right here and go around that upper triangle uh, in a counterclockwise direction. It really doesn't matter, but that's the way I'm... It doesn't matter which way you pick. I'm going to pick that way. Okay, so we're going to start there at the blue dot and go counterclockwise. So first, we go from the negative terminal of the 5 volt battery to the positive terminal of the 5 volt battery. That is a voltage increase of 5 volts. Then we get to this resistor. We go over this resistor, the 15 ohm resistor, in the direction of the current I2. So that is a voltage decrease. We're going over the waterfall in the direction of the water. So we're going to subtract the voltage drop across that resistor, which is I2 times 15 ohms. And I'm using this equation here to do that. Okay. And we get here. We're going across the 10 ohm resistor in the direction of the current. So that's going to be I1 times 10 ohms. And then finally, we're back at our original starting point. So the sum of all of those voltages is equal to zero. Well, we need one more equation uh, because we have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. We have only two equations so far. Let's get one more. So let's uh, this time take the bottom loop. Let's start right here, and we'll go counterclockwise around that loop. First, we go from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. So that's going to be plus 10 volts. Then we go across this resistor. This time, however, we're going in the direction opposite to the current flow. So that's going to be plus I2 times 15 ohms. Okay. Now we keep going. Here, we're going to go over the 30 ohm resistor in the direction of current I3. So that's a voltage drop minus I3 times 30 ohms, and that's equal to zero. Well, at this point, uh, we have finished with the physics. Uh, we have an algebra problem. We have three equations with three unknowns. So let me label the equations. Equation one, equation two, and equation three. And uh, what I'm going to do is plug equation one into equation two so that I'll have two equations with just um, I1 and I3. Okay, let's rearrange equation one so that equation one now says I1 equals I2 plus I3. And now we're going to plug that in right there in equation two. So equation two becomes five volts minus I2 times 15 ohms minus I2 plus I3 all times 10 ohms. Multiply through and combine like terms. So we get five volts minus I two times fifteen minus I two times ten minus I Three times ten equals zero. So 
you know, combine 5 volts minus 22 times 25 ohms minus I, 3 times 10 equals 0. I now have two equations and two unknowns instead of three equations and three unknowns. Here's one equation that has both I2 and I3 in it, and here is an equation that has both I2 and I3 in it. So I need to figure out how to get rid of either I2 or I3. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 3 and add it to equation 3. Okay, so if we multiply by negative 3, we get negative 15 volts minus I2 times 75 ohms minus I3 times 30 ohms equals 0. And now, when you add that equation to equation 3, you get minus 5 volts um, let's see, I believe I have a sign error. If I multiply this, this equation star by negative 3, then that should be negative 15. But this should be positive, and this should be positive. There, that's better. Now, 10 volts. Minus 15 volts is minus 5 volts. Now we have 15 I2 plus 75 I2. That's I2 times 90. Then we have minus I330 plus I330 is plus 0. Plus 0. So now we can solve for I2. We have only one variable. I2 is, nine, is 5 volts over 90, which is the same thing as 1 over 18 amps, or in decimal form, 0.0556. Okay, we can now plug that uh, into this equation to solve for I3. When you do that, you will get that I3 uh, is equal to 0 0.361 amps. We then use this equation. I1 is just I2 plus I3. So I1 turns out to be 0 0.417. It just so happens that all of our current value answers came out positive. Uh, since they all came out positive, that tells us that the original guesses that I made about the directions of the currents here, here, and here, uh, those directions were all correct. If at some point you guess wrong about the direction of a current, then you'll end up with a negative answer when you do the math. And that just tells you that the way you guessed was opposite to the actual direction. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, that's all there is to it. Notice that uh, the presence of an extra battery and the presence of that diagonal looking wire did not affect how we solved the problem. You always just uh, 
guess the direction of the currents, apply the current rule, apply the voltage rule, solve the algebra.